Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm Eva, final year student here at the University of Brighton, and um, we are delighted to be um, joined by the wonderful uh, Dr. Sakshi Tiku. Um, and yeah, over to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eva. And once again, hi everyone. I can't, I cannot see many faces, so I might uh, ramble sometimes. So uh, apologies for that in advance. That's just a disclaimer. But hi everyone. I am Sakshi Tiku. My pronouns are she, her. I am an occupational therapist and a sexuality counselor. I am based in Mumbai, India. Uh, recently, um, I have been a founder of Sex Love and OT for about two two years two years now uh which basically helps me do a lot of cool stuff and that's it uh this year earlier this year i also published a book called as sex care but i'll speak about that later when it's more relevant so uh i think most of you have joined and you know what this is about session is about which is quite descriptive and uh quite self-explanatory as well when the title comes along. Uh, but I just want to know if everyone can see it still, right? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, great. Uh, so the idea of talking about sexuality as an occupation in this session will just focus on... Okay, wait. Yeah. It's just, um, I like, I was just explaining to Eva as well that this isn't going to be too self, um, I wouldn't be talking much, I'll try not to talk much, but here's what you can expect while we are moving forward. As we go ahead, I'll just talk about sexuality and just covering a few basics about it. I'm sure some of you might know, but if you don't, then it will be like, it's something new to learn about. The second is obviously why this session is happening as to how is sexuality or how does sexuality relate to occupations and third is like a plan of action and later on we can just have like a candid conversation and any questions that you may have all right so let's get into it one of the first things that i always use whenever i'm talking about sexuality is this chart i throw it everywhere to every person's face it's it's basically it in every single presentation that i present is the circles of sexuality and the primary reason being is because when we are talking about sexuality, this entire chart is enhancing or sort of highlighting on the fact that on the middle circle, which is values, and we as occupational therapists, when we talk about client-centered care and holistic care, this is basically a good vision of how the human experience, the entire human experience and the various elements, be it sexual or non-sexual, affect a person's sexuality and the different elements and the domains of sexuality. Now, one of the few circles that you can see here, that it has some of the elements listed quite well, but I'll just go ahead and walk you through it. Number one is definitely sensuality, where we are talking about a person's relationship and the awareness with their body and their senses. The second is intimacy, which is not just personal but also interpersonal relational and even to the environment then we're talking about sexual identities and just identities in general something that has been spoken about almost every single time when we talk about gender when we talk about sex assigned at birth when we talk about when we talk about gender roles and expression a part of it also includes relationship styles and statuses which I think I can cover ahead again. The fourth circle is sexual health and reproduction, where we are talking about the reproductive systems, infections, abortions, contraception, and the ways in which a person can have safer sex and lead a sexually well life. The last circle, which is on the outside, is sexualization. Now, this is something which is um, quite tricky to explain as we often in the realm of sexuality call it as the dark dark side of sexuality where if if you are not having uh for example there's like a fine line between how you flirt and the intentions of flirting and and everything else so when we are talking about rape assault abuse 
um and any any other such sort of sort of manipulatory techniques that can harm a person or the partners or the society that's what falls under the area on the circle of sexualization i personally am not the best person but i think if if you want to do learn want to learn more about dark side of occupation i think dr rebecca twin lee does a br- brilliant brilliant job in her book but uh, i think sexualization is another one part of that as to explaining how there can be different dark occupations or like what can be the dark side of occupations when it comes to sexuality now out of all of this i want to place an extra emphasis on the fact that there's a circle that lies in between which is values which basically includes the person and it goes on to say that that one middle circle is going to impact and influence all the other circles around it so a person's ideologies values awareness perception beliefs and biases all are going to impact every other circle okay i heard someone all right can i continue yeah yeah you can okay. <laughs> Sorry I just heard someone so I was like okay <laughs> because I can't see anybody right now <laughs> so I'm sorry um but yeah so the middle circle is about the person itself now when we talk about these languages and the reason I talk about sexuality using circles of sexuality is because it helps in uh segregating the different types of terminologies that we use interchangeably for example when we are talking about sex we are just talking about the physical acts or when we are talking about sexual health we are again talking about a very small bubble whereas when it comes to sexuality it is this huge awesome chaotic very beautiful mess that is represented in this chart and i think that is exactly what we have to be acknowledging when we think of sexuality and why we need to be visualizing it as an occupation now when we think and when you know when we go towards individual sectors and like individual circles to see how these occupations can be you will also realize that some of the areas are not really sexual and so this is why i say that whenever we are addressing or discussing about sexuality it does not make everything sexual some of the occupations that we see now this is a good list you can get through it this and the ones that uh, all the all the titles that will be listed under circles of sexuality will be correlated so going ahead and looking at something like wo- the very center circle which is values can clearly depict the sexual scripts that a person has the, the routines we have the preferences we have the things that we do something the things that we don't do something how uh, both geographical and social cultural uh, in uh, social cultural understandings influence the way that we make decisions and that we go ahead representing ourselves or expressing ourselves in an environment when we are talking about pleasure and sensory processing it's a combination of both sensuality and intimacy and in the ways that we will be using our nervous system to experience sex and sexuality as a whole which doesn't have to own which isn't concerned only with our genitals the entire circle again of identities and sexual wellness where we are talking about how disclosure is supposed to happen how can one engage in safe practices how can one test regularly menstrual care intimate hygiene some of which also includes uh law, how one can be maintaining um, or how should one be using binders packers and everything else that there is consent anatomy Uh, autonomy sorry then we are talking about intimacy and the different types of relationships intimacy which is sexual and non sexual relationships which can range on a spectrum which can be monogamish which can be monogamy polygamish polyfidelity and there's entire range that i'm not getting into but the fact that it isn't just fixed to a binary or the fact that or it isn't just binary and it is just focused on monogamous relationships 
again on communication and informed decision making boundaries the way that people want to engage with dating how to navigate these digital spaces how can people find body workers and sex workers so which can be used in a way that assumes and affirms the way that they want to access sex assistive day aids and devices which is not just limited to toys but also lubricants rope work assistive pillows um, or toys that can help them help them to manage a certain position and also lastly with inclusivity when it um, in terms of language the bathrooms that are available for people not just in an open space but also in a clinical space and setting and also institutional spaces and settings and also the way that these populations are represented all right so like i said this will be a very very short thing and we can as we go ahead having more discussions about what these mean and how do i work with these these can come up more better in the way that we will be taking q and a's i did not really want to make it as an overwhelming um talk where i talk the last part of it is as to how to create a plan of action uh now one of the first things i think in one of the previous lectures that was i always say this is that you cannot assume so you just don't assume ask first now even before all of this and navigating the realm of sexuality it is really important that you put on your safety seat belts first before going ahead and helping others so if if you are somebody who's interested and want to change the way that you address and discuss sexuality and even re-envision it as uh different types of occupations that show up in a person's life the number one thing is to actually challenge your biases and understand where you stand uh what what is it that you understand from sex what is it that you understand from gender what is happening around your environment what are some extreme deal breakers for you that you think you cannot address some things that you think are within your realm and so on once you understand where you are where your biases come from and where you stand right now what you are ready to change it will also help you understand what your superpowers are and what your limits are when you actually take this into practice so that you aren't imposing your beliefs or saying anything that actually triggers or puts your patients or your coworkers or your peers into any trouble lastly it's always uh, about listening first then ask questions so that you will be able to advocate better for your clients and the last is to move beyond the idea so sex is just an activity even even now when we look at the occupational therapy practice framework i will not say that it's bad but it has progressed because at some point they only mentioned at some point they were ready to mention sexuality as only just sexual intimacy and just sexual activity but as there are many other parts or many other occupations of sexuality that actually do not just fall under the category of sexual activity for example when i was talking about dressing or grooming we wearing the choice of lingerie just because it assists or affirms the way that we want to represent our, represent ourselves in the society or the way we, that we feel is not about sexual activity it's still self care it's still grooming and it's an valid part of our adl which really doesn't have to do with the fact that it just has to be related to our genitals so i think moving beyond the idea of genitals and getting a more expansive and a more abstract view of how sex and sexuality is developing in a human uh, in a human's life basically helps us break those rigid barriers and also help us unlearn thing and unlock new superpowers now here are just a few tips again you can throw these out but i suggest not but as students one of the one of the very important thing that i would like everyone to encourage is that please choose meaningful capstone and thesis projects because at this point i have seen so many uh, capstones where everyone tries to say that why aren't we addressing sexuality when we should and i think i have seen so many projects like that but this is just a reminder to say that once that work has done make sure that if you have the right kind of resources if you have the right kind of guidance and the right kind of field work opportunities 
please go ahead make yourselves uncomfortable and find something that that's truly truly meaningful to you do not address sexuality or its topic because you think that it, it will make you cool or anything else if it's meaningful to you and if you think that can be used as a resource for everyone else globally then please choose something like that you have so much power in your hands secondly please find a community on social media i am not uh, i'm good at instagram but not good at twitter but from everything that i see at twitter the community is expansive even when it comes to instagram this uh, the community is expansive when it comes to facebook groups again there's so much diversity there is so much bouncing off of ideas and the fact that there's so much happening globally is that it will actually help you push and also connect with the right kind of people to help you inform and shape your ideas better also the third thing is whenever you are choosing your field works or if you are already in a field work or volunteering anywhere i always encourage that if you are feeling awkward make others feel awkward as well and ask them how they or what they are doing to address sexuality with their current population and it does not just have to be addressed with adult population sexuality does not happen in a day it is it's it's developmental it begins right at the infancy and continues till the day that you die it just manifests in different way, ways and looks in different ways as we saw in circles of sexuality so make yeah definitely in your field work go ahead make them uncomfortable and and definitely address how how they can be doing things or changing things this also creates a very good environment as to how and it will also tell you about the place that you are actually feeling in that how can you bounce off ideas and make the place more accessible to the populations around it lastly google there is tons of information available on google and all you have to do is just find it and and explore it and read from there i know there might not be everything that is uh, relevant to occupational therapy or been written by an occupational therapist but trust me there is still a lot of information about human sexuality expression narratives which can help you get a good understanding as to what occupations are you missing or what occupations are you not understanding or have not considered yet for educators it is it's it's highly highly important that you challenge your biases um definitely people have had more uh, experience than me i always say that but people have had more number of experience than me they have been more number of years in this field but it also becomes very important if they are ready to challenge their bias biases and ready to accept newer ideas and unlearn the ideas that they already have and if unlearning is not an option then what are you in a position of um, power and that position doing to make sure that just because you have certain biases you are not super imposing them onto your students or your colleagues so please bring these conversations and find these ways of bringing these conversations up with your students and anybody and your colleagues or your peers and brainstorm the ideas that you in the way that you can be moving away from the ideas that this does not have to be addressed with students secondly again uh discuss how can you bring these bring this change and what can you do at in, at your institutional level i mean we can say all great things about what needs to be changed and coursework needs to be changed and what not but even at an institutional level what are the realistic things that can be pulled off and and you would be in a better position to understand how to manage the most admin part as well as bridging the gap as to what your students really need third will be continuing education not just for your students but also as a educator please please go ahead and view these continuing education programs where they do talk about sexuality they talk about pelvic rehabilitation they talk about sexual hygiene they talk about uh, transitioning they talk talk about how occupational therapists can be helping trans people and there are so many other continuing educations that i think even we as educators need to continue having to make sure we are on top of it even though our research is not and lastly obviously think non traditionally which again is 
is difficult and a very challenging aspect given how sexuality is developing and evolving and how the awareness keeps on growing so keeping on top of that also means that we will also be a lot more uncomfortable and it will also require us to think a lot more non traditionally and um, for example one of the things that i mentioned earlier was about relationship styles uh for me i i say this still it's been a few months and i still am learning about the different kinds of relationship styles i've been a person given how my uh, social cultural and my self biases have been been i cannot think beyond monogamous or monogam i cannot think beyond monogamy so monogamous relationships and polygamy and open relationships are still a challenging idea but it's still there and people are still doing it and sometimes it is also a part of the suggestions or the recommendations that i give out to my clients mm. so it's not something that i personally agree with and not something that traditionally has been happening but still a part of my clients wishes and needs and preferences lastly for practicing therapists uh it is it is so important that we are not wrapped up around diagnosis most of our textbooks are are structured in a way where we talk about a certain diagnosis and and the treatment plan that is should be given or can be followed while this is not wrong i have nothing against diagnosis it's truly really helpful but what happens is when we go ahead and and do these things in practice we realize that we get too wrapped around a diagnosis and then forget to see the person there and the occupations that truly really matter so in this way having in health directed care and moving away, away from the whole illness perspective will also help you envision like i said and think will help you envision the non traditional occupations and help you see what the what 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 really matters to the person be it sexually or non sexually the second thing is that's really important is the inclusive language that we use uh, instead of saying wife and husband instead of assuming that having a more common language of partners is much better having using gender neutral pronouns of they is always better creating a setting that is also more inclusive you can have in, i always see have infographics surrounding you can you can either have pronoun pins or badges you can have more infographics or listings illustrations which are much more comprehensive and include not just queer people but also trans people and talks more positively about sex and sexuality which is not stigmatizing the third important thing in inclusivity is definitely intake forms where where even though are the def- demographics that the client fills out needs to be as comprehensive as possible and shouldn't just be limited to sex and gender but in fact about what was the sex assigned at birth the gender that they relate with the pronouns their legal name and their current name because some of them usually are in the process of i'm sorry some of them are actually in the process of changing their names or ha- are transitioning but haven't got their legal documents through so in this case having the two options of the legal name as well as the chosen name will help them receive the care that they want without feeling triggered by the name or dead naming them third is sexuality history taking there are many frameworks available out there but definitely opi si which was the occupational therapy performance inventory of sexuality and intimacy is been created last year last to last year yes it it was created in 2020 by bethan and the team and it's one of the most comprehensive guides that's been available out there for occupational therapists by an occupational therapist which can help you have which can help you conduct both sexual health history taking and um, assessments as well the other model that's available is explicit uh, it's something that i use more frequently in the practice because with opisi i do experience um, some limitations because it hasn't been translated yet and it's something that the client can fill directly so when translating it there's definitely some subjectivity in the way that i use words for desire or arousal in my regional language which can be assumed or uh, interpreted by others 
uh, but second is definitely explicit, which has been the extended module of uh, extended version of the previous explicit model, and it's something that I use more actively because it's both a combination of assessment as well as treatment, and it helps in keeping the sessions uh, either based on short term goals and long term goals, and helps in dividing that. Uh, the fourth one, um, sorry, another history taking model that you can look into, which was created, which was created for nurses is called as the better model, which I generally recommend for students or people who think that they are, they never want to address sexuality or they will never be con uh, confident to, uh, addressing sexuality, in which case the better model helps you in asking questions. Uh, just taking a history like you would without giving any suggestions and making it more easier for you to make referrals, which is again brings me to my last point, which is please make referrals for any practicing therapist. It is extremely important and there is no excuse to not ask questions about sexuality or not address sexuality just because you don't think it's important. If a person or any client that comes to you uh, it is your job and the onus will always be on you to ask them if they have any concerns regarding their sexuality or post their diagnosis. Has there been an impact on their sexuality and so on? If they do not want to discuss this, then that's fine. You can always let them know that you are a resource and they can come back to you whenever they want. But if not, it will always be our responsibility first to ask the question. And if at some point if they do state their concerns and feel that yes, this is something that I have concerns with. And if you think that you are not, uh, you do not have enough resources or you have not dealt with uh, these concerns before, then please acknowledge your limits and refer them to relevant ref uh, rele um, relevant professionals. There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing bad about reference, so please do make them. Interdisciplinary approach is exactly how we should be thriving in the areas of sexuality. If we do not acknowledge that, no other professional is going to acknowledge that occupational therapists also work with concerns of sexuality. And that is all from my end. Uh, there is a resource guide which is available on my website. If you're interested, you can check out. It has a comprehensive list about websites and associations. Um, also, it uh, it includes some books and podcasts and social medias. I have not added any literature because with the open access, close access, it's, it's a huge um, chaos. But yeah, apart from that, if you're somebody who's starting, it's a quite a comprehensive guide and it also has a directory of BIPOC and queer occupational therapists, so you can definitely look into that as well. And the second thing is if you are somebody who wants to just focus on yourself minus the whole therapeutic part, uh, you can go ahead and purchase my book Sex Care, which will be available on Amazon and Kindle. Sex Care has been designed in such a way that it includes both introspection as well as sensory processing and sensory mediated strategies to help you understand yourself better. Again, it's a reminder, it's not a clinical textbook. It's just a guide to help you understand yourself better. And it is all from me.